Hey guys and welcome to another Creative Sound Blaster product review. I'm MVC and this time we've got the Omni Surround 5.1 which for all intents and purposes is a USB sound card designed for both PC and Mac. It's powered by USB so it's going to be ideal to take around with you if you're a laptop user or if like me you're a gamer that travels to events across the world you're going to be able to take it with you and recreate that same sound environment that you use at home and one of the most important things at playing well at an event is to feel comfortable and this is just another stage you can help yourself get there with. But the plan for this video is to look at the features on the sound card itself, why it's useful for me aside from just being able to take it to an event, look at the driver set, look, give you my personal thoughts and feelings on the performance and come back right at the end with a conclusion as to whether you guys should go out and buy one of these or think about buying one of these yourself. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the end. So we've already mentioned the benefits a USB sound card can offer both laptop users without the possibility of installing an internal sound card and pro gamers traveling to events. But what we haven't mentioned is some of the hidden benefits that are often overlooked when looking at buying an internal or external sound card. And that is SLI. Now, SLI, yep, that is graphics cards, but once you've got two, three, or four way, you're gonna be in short supply of PCIe ports, and occasionally then, an internal sound card cannot be an option. Now, for me, having one graphics card for the majority of the time is just fine. I've got one graphics card, two capture cards, and then my internal Creative Sound Blaster ZXR sound card. But once I have two graphics cards, which is every now and then to review, that unfortunately overlaps both my capture card number two and my internal Creative Sound Blaster ZXR sound card. Now, I could, potentially move one above and one below the second. I have slots available, but the slot below the second graphics card, for whatever reason, just refuses to work. And I have to have two capture cards in at all times. So basically my capture card goes in between the two and my ZXR sound card comes out for the duration of the review, which is really frustrating when you're working with deadlines because I have to schedule them around my tournament play. Until now, with the Omni, of course. So I can take my ZXR out, use my Omni for the review, take the Romney out and put it back into my ZXR afterwards once I've got the second graphics card back out of the system. And sometimes for those that were in two, three, four way SLI, you've got no ports available whatsoever. So a USB sound card has to be the option all the time. So this is definitely something you should consider looking at if PCI ports could turn out to be a problem for you. But what we're gonna do is go over the driver set and how go through all the features and what you've got available to customize. Then we'll have a demonstration and come back with my final thoughts at the end. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at the driver software on offer here with the Omni. And as always, I recommend you hit up the technical support area at creative.com and just make sure you're up to date on the driver's firmware and software just so you're not running into any bugs that may have already been ironed out. But once installed, you're greeted with this. And if we hit the down arrow, you can see here we can choose whether to start the control panel with Windows Start so you don't have to mess with MS Config, restore to default, select the audio device, change the software language, and hit the About tab. But for the main crunch of things, we've got SBX Pro Studio, Crystal Voice, Scout Mode, Speakers and Headphones phones, cinematic, mixer, equalizer, and a custom profile which you can take with you to events or wherever you travel to. But if we go back to the beginning, you may have think this is looking all too familiar, and that's because it is. It is exactly the same SUI with the exception of one or two settings as the ZXR that I currently have installed. As you can see, if I go through this, there is literally only one or two settings that have changed, one or two additional features maybe that you get when you pay the premium for the ZXR. Perhaps the primary one has got to be the gain levels that you can set for the headphone amp. So on the ZXR, you can choose 32, 300, and 600, which you don't get that option on the Z, the ZX, and also now the Omni. This is only a ZXR feature. But yeah, if we go back to the Omni, we can see under SBX Pro Studio, we got Surround, which is our virtual surround sound. You can control the level of audio, emotion, in music, movies, and games. I've got a value of 20%, which I think works well across the board. I've used it on my ZXR and now here on the Omni. Uh, the crystallizer is the method of restoring portions of sound lost during compression. In other words, it's going to try and enhance music, movies, and games to make them sound livelier. I've got a value of 25%, and again, I think that works well across the board. We've also got bass. Now, bass I turn off, not off, off, but I don't add any additional software side of things because I like things to sound, when I'm playing competitively, as flat as possible. I don't want the booms and the buffs and all that kind of thing going on. I want to hear the footsteps, but it's useful to have if you're watching movies or maybe you're playing a bit of Battlefield. And you've also got Smart Volume and Dialog Plus. Now, Crystal Voice, we've obviously got a mic boost and volume. We can choose a, a voice for ourselves. This time, and we've also got Smart Volume, which is actually a really useful feature if you're a team caller. So let's say you're a team caller in League of Legends, or maybe you're a team caller in Counter-Strike. Maybe sometimes your teammates say you talk a little bit too quietly like this. 
this and you can turn on smart volume and then this should be trying to increase it to a normalized level which is always good because you never want people to not hear you when you're calling important information uh, noise reduction again the feature i most miss when i remove the sound card from my system it gets rid of ceiling fans it gets rid of air conditioning units and as you can see now there's probably a bit of a hum in the background even though that's probably just my computer making the noise since both of them are off but uh, yeah, that's noise reduction for you. And you got focus, which works in tandem with the inbuilt dual microphones on the unit itself. And the scout mode, this is effectively a way to hear footsteps when you shouldn't. At least that's what it tries to do. And I find it works quite well in games like Counter-Strike and TF2. But you've got to choose carefully because if you're playing a game like Battlefield and you use scout mode, everything kind of gets amplified. So it's sort of game dependent, but you can set it up to a hotkey where you like using it best. Um, again, the only thing I perhaps miss from the internal sound card is that there's no easy button to change from speakers to headphones. Instead, you have to go down the drop down box and select what you want. Uh, under cinematic, we've got no encoder and Dolby Digital Live. Under mixer, we've got all the stuff we'd recommend. The only thing here you need to pay attention to is what you hear. It doesn't matter what you have speakers on, as long as you have what you hear at 100%. When you're recording, you'll always record at 100% and not 20%, which is useful for streaming and maybe YouTubing, that kind of thing. And you can also change your left and right balance, that good stuff. But finally, we've got equalizer, which I've set up for Quake Live. The low ends, which is the bass, I've dipped down again, just trying to reduce bass when I'm playing competitively. I've kept the mids at a normalized level and then I've started increasing the high ends to increase footsteps with uh, my overall level at just zero dB which is default and that's how I find it works well and to be honest might as well just save this now so Dignitas MVC Quake Live and that's it. So again, you can't be disappointed with this. The driver software, since the recon range of sound card, the Z's and now the Omni is exactly where it should be. It's perfect. And if you really want, you can go ahead and set a picture or add your own. So I guess what looks like Quake across there, probably. probably. And, uh, even though I use a lot more basic one than that, just a plus. But, but yeah, uh, stay tuned. We'll go for some testing next. Now it's time to put the Omni to the test. So give me a couple of minutes. I'll get set up with the camera and all that good stuff. And be right back with some music and gameplay. Okay, so the first test I wanted to do was music with the Omni, and to help with that, Creative have also sent along the Inspire T6300 5.1 speaker set. Now, I've been able to put this together in a very makeshift way. As you can see, I've got the rear left speaker propped up on the box, and I've got the rear right speaker propped up on the right side of the table. So, whilst I am sat in front of the primary screen, which is the one on the left, it is just okay, because both the rear left and rear right are about equal to my ears. In an ideal setup, you're going to have a more rectangular base setup, where you have them probably just behind just to give you that true 5.1 setup so after the end of this video I will be reverting back to 2.1 speakers just because it suits my room but what's important is it highlights the fact that the Omni is future proof if you ever decide to upgrade to 5.1 down the line but what I've also got is the remote here hopefully my webcam will autofocus please there we go and what we're going to do is just go ahead and play some Spotify music. So my one disappointment is that the volume on both the remote and the knob on the unit itself alters Windows volume. Whilst it's not a problem though because you can change it in the creative control panel to make sure that what you hear is always at 100% when you're streaming or capturing YouTube footage, it just would have been nice if they could have been separate. But again, I'm picking at straws here. So yeah, regardless, what we're going to do is hit play. We're going to be in Spotify and we're going to go up in increments of two, which is every time you hit the volume knob or button, sorry. And uh, once we hit 20, that's pretty much what I use all times. And once we hit 50, well, that's pretty much as high as you ever want to go. Not because the speakers start to distort or anything, more because it's just so loud uh, that you're going to be waking everybody up. That's house party level. I dread to think what 100% is like. In fact, I daren't do it. I've got to book glaze windows, and even then I'm a little bit afraid to do so. But uh, yeah, we're going to hit play, and we'll see what it sounds like.
And just to point out, you can press the button on the top there and mute all audio coming out. That's for both headphones and of course speakers, which is a neat little feature. But yeah, that's a 50%. We actually started a bit above 20 or sorry, a bit above eight. But regardless, I think you'd probably, hopefully my microphone's done a pretty good job of picking up just how clear that is anyway. But um, yeah, that's... I'm actually astounded for the price that the T6300 cost and how small the subwoofer is. I just, I can't believe the, the bass and the audio, the clarity coming out of it. It really is a great setup and it has surprised me to say the least because I've been used to a good pair of 2.1 speakers and this really does just take it to that next level and I, I kind of wish that my room was more suited to 5.1. But next up, we're going to quickly just jump into games. Okay, now it's time for gameplay. Now, last night I was playing with the uh, Creative ZX headset for a few hours in Battlefield 4. Unfortunately, I found out afterwards it was the final day of the Battlefield 4 beta, so I wish I was recording. So today we've got Battlefield 3, uh, Team Fortress 2, and Shoot Mania. And Shoot Mania, of course, which is notoriously bad for sound, trying to position and pinpoint where your enemies are. But i got to say, with the Five Point Inspire T6300 speakers that I've been recording with here today, I had no problems whatsoever. I'm sure you'll probably be able to make it out in the video. And with Team Fortress 2 and Battlefield Battlefield 3, which have specific 5.1 settings, again, just had an enjoyable experience with it. And it's something I have to recommend. The clarity, you can pretty much pinpoint every single detail in the sound thanks to the speakers and the Omni combination. And yeah, nothing more to say. On to the final thoughts. So on to my final thoughts for the Omni Surround 5.1 USB sound card. Um, where do I start? It is an absolutely phenomenal product, especially for the price you pay. You're going to be hard pushed to find anything better with the amount of features you get along the bottom, as well as the 600 ohm headphone amp, which is instrumental in my gaming day-to-day -day life, especially when you go to an event and you've got that annoying Counter-Strike player behind you that's screaming his head off. You need to increase the volume a little bit to hear the footsteps in your game. You're going to be able to do that with this thanks to the headphone amp. As well as that, you're going to be able to drive the more demanding of headphones like I mentioned earlier on. But if I'm going to fault it in any way, it's not even a fault. It's kind of a feature slash request. And that's because I've been spoiled with this ZX headset. And that is, whilst it's nice to be able to change the volume, skip the track, play, pause, whatever with the included remote, with the headset, and it's primarily designed because you want to train without a laptop or PC with you, on my phone through Bluetooth, I can control the SBX profile so I can add virtual surround, change the equalizer, change the profiles, maybe add dialogue plus whatever it happens to be. So if I'm across the room, it would have been nice maybe to have Bluetooth functionality so I could connect directly to the USB device and utilize it that way. But yeah, unfortunately, that's maybe something for the future. Aside from that, honestly, cannot recommend the product enough. In many respects, I kind of prefer it to my internal card. It frees up a slot inside the case which is nice for SLI and I can't, I don't know if it's just me but the microphone um, seems a little bit more natural coming out of this than it does out of the ZXR but I think that's probably just me but, um, but yeah maybe if you're using a laptop and you want to improve on your inbuilt audio this is something to check out if you're using a desktop and you want to free up space again look at this not only do you get the headphone amp but you get all the features below and if you're using a Mac well yeah again check it out. But I'm going to be recommending that the majority of our Team Dignitas players that go to big events without soundproof booths look at picking these up. So yeah, probably a recommended product. Make sure you check it out if you're interested. But yeah, I've been MVC. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments below, just leave them there and I'll get back to you. But for now, I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.